Hey friends, welcome to today's Valentine's Day swatch doll tutorial. So before we get started, as with all of these swatch dolls tutorials, if you haven't watched the original tutorial, I'll put a little eye card up here somewhere. I don't know which side it's on, uh, but I'll put the original swatch dolls illustration tutorial up there for you. So you can go and check that out. That's how you'll learn how to draw the base of the, uh, the kind of figure that we're drawing today. And these holiday kind of themed tutorials are to take us through drawing all the basic elements broken down into really simple to follow shapes and kind of uh, motifs that we're going to use to build a piece today. Now I've done it in an art journal, you could do this on a card, you could do it on a scrap piece of paper, you could do it on a canvas, it really doesn't matter, uh, just as long as you're having fun doing it. If you want to go over to my Facebook group, in the uh, group there's actually a free printable that is a reference or a cheat sheet for this whole tutorial, so that's completely free for you to download, print, reference, copy, photocopy, do whatever you want to do with it. Um, but it's actually got all of the little motifs that we're going to learn how to draw today, broken up into red and blue lines as well. I'm just kind of seeing if this might help some people as I do go through things quite quickly. But if you start with this and do the red line and then the blue line, I think hopefully that might help you break down some of these uh, simple shapes into even more simpler shapes. There's also a cleaned up version of the piece that we map out at the end of this tutorial, which is what we use to create this final piece here. And down here I've given you four different layouts to try using all the little motifs that we learn how to draw. You can put them together in all kinds of random arrangements and come out with something completely fantastical for V-Day this year. So please feel free to reference these or copy these or use these as ideas as well. If you're clever enough just to uh, print this out large size or maybe just print it on sticker paper, you've got four free stickers there. <laughs> <laughs> or five, I guess, if you're including this one. I'm going to show you through a bunch of different samples at the end that I've made uh, using just the stuff that we learned today. So these fun little love letters that I've made this little kind of interactive journal page with little notes in there from my husband. We've got this cute little layout here. See what I mean? There's just like a reference for you to follow if you want to put that together. But you'll learn how to draw the envelopes in this tutorial. And then it's all kind of up to you how you put it all together. So I've just done a bunch of envelopes and made her a little envelope bag. There's no real need to learn how to draw all of these. If you don't want to, you can just learn what you want to draw and put that together. I've also taken the little love bug and made just a love bug spread. I thought that was fun. And then there's something that I went all the way ultra on and just gave myself a bit of playtime with the graphite pencil. You're going to learn how to draw all this stuff today. Whatever you decide to do with it, I hope you have fun. That's about all I have to show you before I go. But I wanted to quickly mention on Instagram, I put a coupon code for my new Valentine's Day collage sheet that's available on Etsy right now. If you want to go and find that Valentine's Day post. It's very pink and you can save yourself 50% off if you feel like picking up this collage sheet, which has some of the elements that we're going to learn today. I've printed this on sticker paper. I use these in my journals. I use these in my planners. I mean, I use old collage sheets to make new pieces of work. It's just a super fun time if you feel like doing that. But I wanted to mention it. I'm not going to give you the code on here because it's specific for Instagram. <laughs> if someone's generous enough, they might give it to you in the comments below. But either way, there'll be a link to that collage sheet underneath in the description box below. So grab yourself a pencil and a piece of paper and we can get to practicing. Again, please download this and reference this if you need it. I want this to be simple and fun for you to follow along. No pressure here, no anxiety to create a masterpiece. We're just playing for Valentine's Day. Oh, and something I also forget all the time is to actually add my words to these little heart candy lollies. I forgot to add them in here as well. So <laughs> please add the words if you you remember? I remembered in the tutorial, but every sample I look at, I haven't added any of the words to them. I might go for a bit of a journal in there later. All right, let's get on to the tutorial, the mapping out, and then some close-up shots of all these samples at the end. Thanks for watching. Bye. So we have a few motifs to learn how to draw today, and I'm going to go kind of quickly because there's a little more than I intended to put in there, but they are really simple, and uh, obviously you can skip the ones that you don't feel like you want to use, or perhaps uh, won't apply to whatever end design you come up with, or um, you could just learn all of them, it doesn't matter. <laughs> all right, I've got a pencil here, just a graphite pencil and a piece of paper. Let's start with something super easy, a heart shape. Now to show you what we're going to do to this heart shape, we're going to make those little, uh, you know, those little musky lolly things that have the little words on them. I'm going to draw a square next to it because I want you just to see the principle of what we're doing with this. Each of these corners, I want to jut off a tiny little line, the same angle as the first one and the same length as the first one as well. And what that does 
is allows us to connect these parallel lines, you know, parallel to this top line, parallel to this right hand side line, and it allows us to make this object 3D. So if, I mean, you could use that as a book, if you just put some lines across the side here, you could even put the spine down there and write book. This is a really, really simple way to make something 3D. And I used to do it when I was learning how to do bubble lettering or 3D lettering. So I'd take a J. The idea is at any point, on this thing, you want to make sure that the angle and the length is the same size. This is the easiest way to do it. Now the issue is, sometimes, I mean, you're not going to connect this inside thing up unless you were doing something that was transparent, but we're not going to worry about that today because that is way too much more than we need to worry about. But if you're pushing off all of these lines, generally find, like, if you're doing it off to the right, it'll be on the right hand side of these lines. Down here again, see now we're going into the letter, we don't want to be going into the letter, we just want to be going on the outside of it. If you were going the other way, all of these lines would most likely come off the top and the left hand side because of the angle it's going at. But either way, I just don't want you to worry about that. All we're worrying about is that it's the same angle and the same length, and so we can join it up together. Now down here, this is where I think some people get a little bit confused and they think, oh, well, it's got to wrap around the bottom here, the curve. And I'm showing you a curve because we're going to put it on the heart. If you decide to go around the curve, see how this angle here isn't the same as this angle here. It's completely different. You always have to follow the same angle that you first bumped it out like. And what you'll find is that as you go around the curve, that angle is actually going to disappear into the curve. And that'll show you just how far you need to go down because it will kind of wrap underneath where it starts to curve. And that's just the most simple way that I can explain to you quickly how to 3D an object or a shape. So what we're going to do for the heart, this is way more complicated than we needed to look at, but just so you know, for the heart, I want to do the same angle here. So we're going off to the top right hand corner and just literally, I mean, what is that? Like five millimeters? I'm going to jut that off there. Now I'm a little confused because this does kind of disappear behind, but I need to know where to finish this line. And the idea is that as you're 3Ding it, you're essentially making the second line. Some people even do it like this. Like if I could just make it really simple for you. Some people even draw the object twice and then just match all the corners up and then they'll go in and erase what's underneath it. I just find that it gets a little tricky to look at it that way and you don't know what you're erasing and where you're coming from because then you've got to erase this part here too, this part here too. That's, I mean, essentially if you're gonna draw something transparent, you could do that. It would certainly work for a heart as well. You would just bump it off to the side and any of these points, they would connect. But see how it gets a little confusing as to know like, oh, where, what do I erase at this point? So that's why I like this technique, is because you're just bumping it off. I still want you to kind of think of it down here as, as bumping off, even though it disappears into the heart a little bit. You could also put one here, and maybe that would help you. But just remember, the line that you're pushing them out from is the line that you're going to, to draw. So if this line here is curved that way, you're going to curve this line the same way, and it is going to disappear behind that heart shape. Again, I'm gonna bump it out here. This is so curved down here, I'm probably not gonna see it with that angle. I'm still gonna bump it out here. I might even put one up here to know where to go. And then I'm gonna connect with the same curve around the side. And there you can see we've kind of just made a 3D little heart shape. Now, I only wanted to show you that technique because I think it helps if you've never tried to 3D anything in your life before, but it is just as simple as drawing your heart and then taking a parallel line off both right hand sides. Now also, you could do it the other way if you're left handed and for some reason it feels more comfortable doing it the other way. And to be honest, I wouldn't worry about it looking perfectly heart shaped and perfectly 3D. We're gonna be drawing those little lollies, it's fine for them to be a little wonky. So that's the first thing we're doing is the 3D heart lolly. Since we've got our heart shape here, I just wanna mention something just in case you decide to make some heart shaped balloons. <laughs> we've got a heart. If you ever want to make something look like it's got the glare of a balloon, I would usually recommend that you take a white gel pen or a white paint pen and just draw an exclamation mark on one side of it. Now, if you had a bunch of these, whatever it was, even if it was a different shape, even if it was a circle and you had a squarish looking one, you would draw that exclamation shape literally in the same place on each of those shapes. I would then put a little triangle at the bottom 
for the connection of the balloon and then obviously your string off to wherever you want. If you're not doing this as a last step, like you're not gonna use your white gel pen or a white paint pen, when you actually come to draw this exclamation point, you can still curve it down and start there. And if you run a line parallel to the first one you drew and taper it off down to the bottom and then make this a full circle, now you've got a place to leave out whilst you're coloring in. You want to leave that place white so it looks like the glare or the kind of uh, shine on the balloon. It doesn't also have to be this long kind of a shape. You can break it up a little bit. You can put multiple glares down there. It can be, it could go the other way, almost like a triangle this way. I like to change it up. It works well for bubbles as well if you had bubbles. Just this exclamation point in the same place. I think that's the point that I really want to stress is that if it's all if you've got a bunch of these images that have to have the glare on it, putting it in the same place on each one just shows that the light source is constant throughout the picture. Now, I don't really care for light sources. You'll see if you ever look at the shading on my stuff, it's very generic and there's no specific light reference. But for this in particular, I think it's just a lot easier to understand if you've got it all in the same place. So there we've just done a little, let's call it a balloon exclamation point. Another simple shape is lips. I think that's fun for Valentine's Day. We just want to draw a big M. We want to do a line that connects both sides and we want to do an upside down rainbow or a U shape. This is the most simple lip shape that you can do, but if you really want to take it to a bit of an extra place, start with the M again, start with the line, just draw it faint this time and start with the upside down U shape and simply connect them in a way that would exaggerate the curve that you've got going on. So you really don't need to do anything specific to it, but you're just adding a little bit more of a uh, pinch on some of these angles. That's lips. This isn't particularly an actual thing to draw, but it's a motif and it's just scalloped patterns. I'm gonna use some of these in my example, so I just wanted to mention them. I think they're also really fun if you have a heart shape. It looks like frills going all the way around the outside. And what they are is just a bunch of connecting U shapes. You start with one U and then you add another U connected to that and then just keep going for days and days and days, you've got your scallops. But play with having them a lot more spread out and a lot more spaced out, and then play with other ones that get really, really tiny and really, really, uh, you know, packed in quite tight. It'll look like a nice frilly kind of element for your piece. So let's just call that frills. Let's flip the page because we're getting a little messy on this page. <laughs> Keeping with our simple shapes, we're gonna do some uh, Cupid's arrows. I'm not worrying about the bow today. This isn't an archery lesson, it's just <laughs> for the piece. So I'm gonna draw a triangle up the top. This is the much, much simpler version uh, than the other one that I'll show you, but the other one's not difficult at all. Let's draw a straight line angling down from the middle of that triangle. Let's draw a heart to kind of break it up a little bit and add the valentines in it and then keep that line going straight down vertical again. Right at the end, I wanna put a tail off, which is basically the same as if we were gonna draw the triangle at the top, but we're just not drawing the bottom. Or you can just look at it as two stick figure legs. The next one I wanted to do, I'm gonna leave this heart out. I'm actually gonna turn the heart upside down and have it be the point on our arrow. Now in the middle where this heart kind of dips in, that's where I'm going to take my vertical line from there. And at the bottom, I still wanna add these stick figure legs, but I also wanna add two more, the same length, the same angle as the one at the bottom. So I mean, really, it's not more difficult than the first one. It's just a bit of a different look, but you could go nuts adding, you know, you could add like a bunch of little hearts on your stick, you could add circles, or you could add, I don't know, leaf shapes, you could add a bow, it really doesn't matter. But uh, just the general idea is that we're making an arrow from a vertical line and some triangle and stick figure legs. Or a heart, not a triangle. Either way. <laughs> Since I'm on some vertical line kick, let's just draw one here, and we're gonna draw some heart flowers. Now, I am not big into florals, but I can manage it for this today. I wanna draw my stem, just this vertical line, I wanna draw a circle just disconnected from that stem. You could start in any order. I actually find it's easier to start with the circle than the stem, but for some reason I did that. <laughs> the first one I wanna show you is simply the heart shapes, leaving that circle and then coming back to connect to it. And they're just going to be side by side. So technically we're just drawing 
a five petal flower. It doesn't have to be five. If you can only fit four, just keep it with four. But the idea is that all of our petals are heart shaped. If you want to take it to an extra place, you can do smaller hearts in the middle and shade those or add patterning to them. But this is not going to look like a real flower for all intents and purposes. Today, we're just building a heart flower. <laughs> the next one I wanted to show you is exactly the same principle. I don't know why I started it like that again. Uh, the same principle, the circle, but making them much longer heart shapes and really filling out that entire radius. If you find it difficult to do this, just draw a circle in so you know where to finish your heart shapes because sometimes, look at how messy that's getting, but still I live. Um, sometimes if you are uh, if you don't have a guide to work with, your, your flower might be like really long out this side and then really short down this side, which might be a nice perspective, but uh, you know, just to keep it simple, uh, you can add a guideline for yourself, just a circle. And then you might wanna add some little exclamation point uh, kind of detailing in there. You might want to add the smaller hearts again. You might want to add nothing at all. It can just be another flower. Two simple flowers for you to try. More is kind of accent pieces rather than, you know, letting this be your finished piece. But if you can find something fab to do with that, I'd love to see it. I need to sharpen my pencil already. I hope this isn't moving too quick for you, but I tend to ramble on in these things. And I think what we're doing today is actually quite simple uh, to follow. If you do need to rewind it a little bit, hopefully you catch it the second time. Because we've just done our flowers, I wanna do a bouquet now. The simple idea of the bouquet is that you're gonna draw a triangle upside down. And then where it connects to the bottom, you wanna draw a smaller triangle there. Now this is a very generic idea of a bouquet, but I like to use these shapes to kind of build it out. So if I want to, I'll just follow that line down. I won't quite go in so that it meets to nothing. If I want it to be a bit more stylized, I might do that. But I'm just going to curve it out a little bit just so I can give a little bit of body to this shape. Otherwise it just kind of disappears. At the top, I wanna to do like a jagged line as if the uh, it's been cut. And at the bottom, I wanna do a jagged line as well. Probably just gonna do a cross shape where it meets and a little bow. From this tapered in point down here, to add that kind of crease or fold, what I like to do are these kind of candy cane hooks. And I like to make them different sizes and face different ways. So it kind of looks like there's that creasing going on, but we're really not getting into the nitty gritty of how the folds work, just kind of inferring that there are some there. At the top of the bouquet, if you need a reference point, I would almost draw it so it's like this ice cream shape, like a uh, just a semicircle out the top. And then I'm just going to fill it with really generic circle and scalloped flowers. Again, these are just little decorative motifs to add to your piece. If you want to spend more time on the detail of them or if you can draw flowers really beautifully and you just wanted to know how to put them into a bit of a bouquet kind of a shape, then uh, take this for what you will. Out the bottom, I'm just going to add little sticks for the stems of the flowers, kind of following the same idea that they're all kind of coming from this center point. So if this is the center of your, like this is where you've got your bow here, that all of these would kind of come from out that way. Might be better to have them be a few different lengths, or you could just have them all kind of meet there, color the whole thing green and call it a day. As with most things, the way you draw the reference shape is kind of gonna dictate how it turns out. So if you find that you don't like the way that it looks, it might just be in the proportion of those shapes. Like for me, I think that's way too long of a top part of this bouquet. So when I drew my next reference, I would probably draw the triangle a little more stout and I might draw the bottom a little bit longer. That way when I came to do it, it might be more of the proportion that suits my eyes. I still think that's too long for me, but you know what, let's just leave it. <laughs> Maybe I can add a, another little triangle shape this way and another bit of a uh, ruffle at the top and we'll just pretend that it's double bagged. There you go, that's an extra tutorial just for free. <laughs> just double the shape up and you can uh, kind of double bag that bouquet. Let's take it back to Simpleville for a second. I just wanna draw some love letters this time. I'm not gonna draw the letters, we're actually just gonna draw the envelopes. So just sketching out a quick rectangle. I'm just gonna do a square off to the side to demo that as well. You wanna start at the top, either the left hand or right hand side corner, and just section it off into a triangle here. You don't really want to hit the bottom, just leave a little bit of a space at the bottom. You kind of want to go past halfway, but I, I think thinking about it like that too much is just going to be confusing. And to be honest, you could do it a lot shorter as well. It would just be a 
a different kind of looking envelope. Just to demo that, I'll just show you. It doesn't have to go past center, but I like the look of that. I'm just gonna put a little love heart on here because it's V-Day. Now I'm gonna take the two exposed bottom corners. I wanna angle these up so that they meet halfway between here and here. So if I had a halfway point here, I wanna meet it there. So halfway from this corner to the end of that flap, just put a little notch there and I'm gonna meet it there. Because I don't wanna tell you to you know, directly cross this in half. You can do that. I just think all the working lines get a little bit messy. And to be fair, I wouldn't even notch out that halfway point. I'd kind of just give it a good guess and just attach it to the corners. See how I just, I mean, you could get away with that being an envelope. I just don't really love the look of it. <laughs> and the reason I don't want to tell you to, you know, exit out and cross here is because technically this flap, if it didn't cross the middle, it wouldn't cover that which would be fine if you wanted to have this kind of opening up. So run with that if that's something that you want, if you want your envelope to be a little bit open. I just think that's kind of unnecessary for what we're doing today. So for all intents and purposes, just a rectangle or a square, divide it off into a triangle, add your little notch, your little love heart, and then just disappear these lines behind that triangle connecting to the corner. And then you've got a really simple love letter. I've got two more things to show you real quick, and then I'm going to map out a piece for you. A bow. Now, I, there's so many ways you can draw a bow, but let's keep it as simple as everything else today. Just a rounded square to start yourself off. Taking it from the top corner on each side and the bottom corner on each side, you just want to knock off a big rounded triangle, almost like a candy corn shape. I like rounded because I think anything too pointy, I mean, it definitely works, but it just gets a little, just a little harsh for Valentine's Day. <laughs> uh, but you could definitely do that. From the little center square that we have here, I want to start almost at the top, but I want to leave a space from this top line to what I'm about to draw. I'm going to draw a loop that almost catches the top and the side of that bow. So in essence, you're kind of just drawing a really elongated tear shape, but you're following the curve of that bow, the top there, and then you're bringing it back in. You really do want to leave some space at the top and on the side, and that'll show you that the fabric is actually folded around. From there, I'm just going to add some simple ribbons coming off, so two parallel lines, just jumping out the bottom of this rounded square, and I'm gonna cut it off at a diagonal. You can actually go a lot more interesting with this, if you decide to, when you draw them, have them taper out wider at the bottom. So this, see how this kind of stayed the same width all the way down? If you actually make it larger, and I'm not gonna draw it underneath there because it's kind of behind that one, but if you make it larger as it expands down to the bottom and then cut it off on your diagonal, I just think it has a much more of an interesting curved shape. If you're looking for an alternative to this uh, kind of bias cut ribbon, you can just add triangle shape in there and uh, and you'll have that notched out kind of uh, ribbon. So again with the bow we've got that rounded square, we've got the two big triangles off to the side, we've got the elongated teardrop shape that just follows the top curve and then we've got some ribbons that get bigger as they travel down. Like, and I like to make them different lengths as well. I think that's fun. There's our bow. The last thing we're going to look at is a love bug. I'm going to turn it to the back and give you a real big demo space. <laughs> this is technically a ladybug, but I thought if you just gave it some love heart shapes on its back, it could be a love bug. And uh, maybe that might inspire you to do a whole bug collection for Valentine's Day. Oh, before I go anywhere, I completely forgot. On this, we're supposed to add words. So uh, I'm just doing capitals and keeping them rounded. I don't know why I forgot to say that, but for the 3D heart lolly, uh, put a word on there if you want. <laughs> All right, love bug. Let's start with a love bug that has its wings closed. We're gonna do an oval shape. Just a nice big oval shape. At the top center of that oval shape, I just want you to do a rainbow. Now, whether you want to put eyes on this is, is totally up to you or not. I don't much care for the details in this. From the top of this rainbow, I want to put two antennas, just curved lines kind of separating there. You could put a little hook in one of them if you want. You could put a little squiggle, up to you, depending on how quirky your bug is. And then I'm going to put little hearts on the end of the antenna. Antennae? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to divide this oval shape right down the middle just to give myself a guideline. And I also want to kind of notch out just two little areas close to the bottom, 
equidistant from the middle. And I don't know why I said that word. I never used that word, but you know, equal distance from that center point. And what you want to do is actually follow the line and then curve it out towards the bottom. This is the body of the bug and these become the wings. And for the wings, I'm just going to add little love hearts all over them instead of our uh, usual ladybug patterns. And that way I think she becomes little love bug. Now to have the bug's wings open, which is a look that I kind of prefer, especially in the demo piece, I'm gonna show you. I had a love bug dress and these kind of become peplums. We still wanna start with the oval shape because the bug's still gonna have the same body. The same thing for the head, the rainbow shape, eyes if you want to, little antenna with love hearts, antennae. I really should have learned that before I started filming. <laughs> for this, we don't so much want to worry about a center point. We're going to start at the top in the center. It's just that each wing you do has to be the same size as the other one, but it's not essential. It can be a little wonky if you want. You want to take this line and you're essentially drawing some big leaf shapes that both meet back at this line here. Not this line, sorry, this little notch that I made at the center just to know where to come back to. Now, I haven't ruled this out. I don't have a grid, so you can see already this wing is a lot bigger than the other one, I think. My perspective might be off. <laughs> if it is, it kind of just looks like the bug's turning a little bit, you know what I mean? Like it's just caught in flight a little bit. Let's just go with that. I'm gonna put the same love heart pattern all over it. And for the body, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to waste too much time on this because it's not relevant, but it is kind of relevant to the one that we map out and the, uh, one of the samples that I have to show you. I've done these curved lines that kind of are like stripes along the body. Just as a guide, you want to uh, put those in quite lightly, but then I'm doing my scallop shape on those lines. So then it's kind of like a frilled little body. And the reason I did that is because in my sample, I actually made a dress out of the love bug. And these are kind of like the, uh, the crinoline skirt layers of the dress, or you know what I mean? Like a stacked fabric, scalloped. Why am I trying to speak at this point? <laughs> Um, that's it. That's everything. If there's anything you need to double check, just rewind a little bit and have a quick go at it. Like I said, these are not fully realized pieces. I don't think any of these things are supposed to stand alone in the piece unless you want to and you've figured out a way that you just want to try something with it. Please, by all means, go and do that. For me, these are the building blocks to get a nice concept going on for my Valentine's Day piece. And the magic for me really comes in whenever I start, you know, using watercolor on here or getting my gel pens out and adding fun little patterns and uh, you know, some things just don't need to be as detailed as other things. And for all intents and purposes, these swatch doll tutorials are all like that, in that they've got a base of a swatch doll, we're building all these motifs around them, and then we kind of have fun playing with that. This is everything for today. Let's look at building a swatch doll with these elements. Okay, so fun fact, I'm actually building a journal spread, not one single page. So I'm gonna divide my paper in half for this mapping exercise. Remember, this is all just a map. You don't really need to worry about how anything looks right now. This is just to show us where it all goes. And I'll grab my red blue pencil to kind of help you out and see where we're putting some certain motifs. On the left hand side of my spread, I'm going to start with my swatch doll. As with all of these, you might want to go back and check the swatch doll tutorial if you need a bit of a refresher or if you've never seen it before. But I'm just putting down the very basic swatch doll. Right, first thing I want to do is I'm kind of just giving myself a little bit of a guide here, put a big circle off to the top right hand side of her head. I'm going to halve that with my line. This is actually where I'm going to put my lips. So I'm going to put the big M shape on the top. I'm going to cross the top of the head with the U shape, the upside down rainbow. And then I've got a big lip fascinator going on. To add as many motifs as I can into this piece, I've actually put one of the envelopes coming out of the lips, one of the love letters. So I'm just gonna draw my rectangle just hanging out of this center line here. So you're not actually gonna get the top part of that rectangle, just the bottom part. I always kind of flip my page or my book around as I'm working to give myself a better reference point. So because this line is now confusing me, essentially the rectangle is here. I'm going to add the details of my love letter like I would when I was drawing it out. There you can see it's kind of hanging out of her mouth. I'm still not finished adding everything up here because I've got lots of motifs today. <laughs> so I'm gonna add one stick coming out the top. Because it's coming out the top, I kind of want it to come out the bottom as well. These are almost like chopsticks, but these are gonna be our arrows. So I'm gonna have two of them coming out here. 
I've got my heart at the top and I've got my three little stick figure legs coming off the bottom. So she has a massive Valentine's Day headpiece going on and I live. On the body, instead of the small rainbow shape we did for the bug, I'm just gonna follow the line of the body up and just kind of create this bust. I also wanna do some big bug eyes coming off here. I know we didn't go through that, but just pretend we did. <laughs> Literally just some bug eyes, some circles with dots. From the top, where her shoulders are, I'm going to put the antenna coming out over her shoulders with the little love hearts again. So you can already see we've got the top of our bug. Just close that off there. So I'm gonna draw my reference shape for my love bug. I'm gonna draw it more circular because I want this to be a very full looking skirt. And then I've got my center point here in the middle of the body. Here come the big leaf shapes for the wings. And I mean, being really gratuitous with how big this is, I know it looks insane but I think at this point we know that these tutorials are a little exaggerated. <laughs> so this is gonna be my wings with all my heart-shaped ladybug pattern. This is where I said the scallops come in handy. I'm gonna add these lines just to know where to go. And then add my scallops. And this is what'll make it look like a ruffled kind of underskirt, but it technically acts as the body for our love bug. I want to add the bow on the back of this. I know it's going to be a little difficult to see because I've made this really, really big. Let's just try and move one of these arrows off to the side here. So I've got a little more space to work with around the dress. So when you're doing this, kind of angle these. I should have mentioned this beforehand, but kind of angle them off to the side a little bit, just so they're not too close to the body here. For our bow, our little center point is probably gonna be behind because it is a bow from behind, so you won't see it. But we're still gonna add those big triangles out like we did before. Again, because it's behind everything, you're not gonna see the bottom part of the triangle. So technically, we're just drawing like half a triangle behind here. We're still gonna add in those really elongated teardrop shapes that follow the curve to show the fold of the fabric. And then just jutting out somewhere down here, you can add in your ribbons. You don't even have to worry about them crossing because they're just gonna disappear behind the dress anyway. Right, I'm going to quickly render all of the motifs that we just put into this piece in blue so you can see where everything is. There will also be a download of this map for you on the Facebook group, the Bergmates Creative Outlet Facebook group. So if you have struggled to follow along with this and you would like something to look at on your computer or possibly print out and trace or copy, that'll be over there, a free download for you as well, just so you can follow along a bit better. But I'll just render it together so you can see where everything is. There you go, there are all our motifs on the left-hand side of the spread. Now I'm gonna do the right-hand side of the spread, which is just a big bouquet. So we're gonna start with that triangle. Kinda of want it to fill the whole page, so I'm just gonna take it as it comes. I'm gonna start with the upwards-facing triangle down here. I've kind of created that skewed hourglass look. I'm gonna bring that in a little bit, and then start adding my little squiggle to show all the folds. I'm gonna do my X across the middle and just a little ribbon, very, very simple stick figure ribbon. I'm gonna do these little hooks a little smaller this time because I think I might wanna end up adding, adding some journaling here. I'm just not quite sure, so I'm just gonna leave it open. Again, from the bottom, we're just kind of imagining lots of little stems hanging out the bottom. Now up the top, this is where I wanna add in all of my uh, little hearts. So. Imagine again, if you need the reference, just draw the rainbow connecting to the bouquet, just so you know how to fill the space or what space you're filling. I don't wanna put all the sticks everywhere first because to be honest, I feel like you're not gonna see a lot of the stems once uh, you've added in all of your hearts and your flowers. And it just gets a little messy to look at if I added in all the stems for every single thing. To be fair, once your eyes fall on it, it's not gonna be looking for every single stem of every piece in the bouquet. Just like when you look at hair, you don't look for every single strand. If you can see that there's, you know, a hair texture there, your eyes just kind of accept it and your brain accepts it too. So we don't need to worry about all the stems. I might want to add a couple down here, but the ones all around the top, 
maybe not because this is where it's it's less likely that you're gonna see any and this is where I'm just gonna go nuts kind of adding in my flowers if you're drawing in a pencil you can just go over whatever you're drawing and kind of erase it if you want to take your time and disappear things behind the back by all means go do that but what I find more effective is if you just fill the negative spaces you're seeing things don't have to disappear behind each other you can actually just fill all of these negative spaces with your little flower hearts. I've all but given up actually trying to draw the hearts at this point, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm more interested in filling the space rather than getting a very, you know, realistic look with it all. I can even add really, really tiny ones in all of these other spaces that are, you know, kind of still open. But then once you've got enough of the space filled, it all comes down to rendering and you can color in these. I mean, you can write your little messages in here love me <laughs> please uh, but once you've done all of your you know your shading and your rendering you can actually just fill the background space just with a color a color that matches all the other colors that you've got in here and it will just look more full by default if you're just staying within this guide that you kind of created for yourself there's no reason you actually have to fill every single part of it with a flower or a heart or a leaf or a stem it can just be filled with color even the bottom, like I don't want to get too crazy with it and start adding in every single stem. So when I come to render it, I might just loosely color this in green, just like a puddle of watercolor in green. So still undecided if I'm going to add some journaling here, I'm going to quickly go over with blue, the motifs that are in this. Now let's just look at what we drew over here. There you go, everything mapped out for you. And I'm gonna show you the samples that I came up with. If you feel like not doing this sample, if you feel like doing another sample you see listed in the video, please screenshot it, copy it, do whatever you need to do with it. Um, I'm more than happy for you to use any of the samples. Also, please don't fear taking all of these ideas and creating your own piece with it. I'm always super fascinated to see what you do with all of the individual elements and how you create your own. But this is not a competition. This is not some crazy thing where you need to do that. If you feel comfortable just following along, having a bit of a practice, having a bit of a copy and a play, I am all for it. This is why I do these tutorials for you. And hopefully you come up with something fantastically Valentine to uh, either give to someone or give to yourself. Remember, self-love is the most important, right? So <laughs> here comes the samples. I will leave you with that. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.